Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Mino Giga Jabe, good morning. How are you? It's August 2nd, 2023. And what's going on? Have all the institutions broken down? Have the colleges fell like playing card hell? The institution of marriage over? Is love dead? Is the church dead? Is God dead? Are you dead? What's wrong with me this morning? <laughs> All right, so for today, today is Ojibwe word of the day. Um, let's see, yesterday we did Manu Minike Gizus, that was the Wild Rising Moon. You know, I've talked a lot about Wild Rising and the uh, migration story. And I go on like I'm some sort of expert on Wild Rice. And I tell stories about my father and uncles and grandfather and great grandfather all harvesting wild rice every fall, taking canoes out. And even my grandmother and auntie and the, even women would sit in the canoe and with their knockers, not those kind of knockers, <laughs> with their these poles and knock the rice into the canoe. I know this not because anybody ever took me ricing or ever asked for my help. No, when it came to my generation, they they had no interest in teaching us the that cultural thing. I've always been kind of embarrassed and in the closet that I've never gone racing. It's just like fishing. For some reason these Indians didn't want to share their cultural stuff. I think that's what a lot of us are. The so-called descendants of the boarding school Indians. Or when they talk about intergenerational trauma, historical trauma. You know, the grandchildren of the boarding school kids are traumatized because, I don't know, there was, there's this weird disconnect. You know, most of us didn't grow up speaking Ojibwe, even though our grandparents knew some, or who knows how much, they wouldn't speak it. And people excuse it and they go, oh yeah, well they were so traumatized as children in boarding school, they were taught they should never speak Ojibwe. Wow, well, who listens to teachers? <laughs> they chose not to tell us the history. They chose not to speak Ojibwe around us. They chose not to carry on the customs and the wisdom of the ancestors. We're all walking around in the dark here because it was actually our very ancestors who failed us. You know, there's a great line in the movie uh, Train Spotting. These guys are from Scotland. They were talking about how much they hate the Scottish. They go, yeah, the English are a bunch of wankers, but we were colonized by wankers. I don't hate the English. I hate the Scottish. <laughs> well, the Indians were colonized by the English and the French, the Italians, whoever. I don't hate those guys. I hate us. Bunch of cowards who just rolled over. Oh, what's your language? Yeah, okay, we'll speak that. What's the religion? Yeah, okay, sign me up. How should I not raise my kids? Gotcha. Until we start taking responsibility for ourselves and quit blaming everybody else, nothing's ever gonna change. All right, one more time. Here's a song about not feeling right. I 
I got no time, and I don't know why. I got no tribe, and you don't know why. I got no why, but I don't feel right. I don't feel right, no, I don't feel the same way today. Today, hey, hey, I don't feel the same way. Wouldn't you rather live now in Minnesota? The days are short and the nights are colder But she doesn't know because I never told her I got no time, I don't know why I got no tribe, you don't know why I don't know why, but I don't feel right I don't feel right, no I don't feel the same Way today, today, hey, hey, I don't feel the same way today. Oh, go Put you on a pedestal until you were no longer credible, and I put you up so you could let me down. Maybe it's finally time to leave this town. I got no time, I don't know why. I got no time, you don't know why. I don't know why, but I don't feel right. I don't feel right, no, I don't feel the same way today. Today, hey, hey, I don't feel the same way today. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I think I might be in a weird mood. I remember, boy, it must be two years ago now, maybe almost three. News came out that they were finding bodies, little children's bodies in these unmarked graves behind the Indian residential schools in Canada. They were starting to do investigations for the first time in over a hundred years. What happened to these kids? Why did they die at school? Why were they buried? And there was no record. You know, what happened? But nobody ever asks, why did the people accept it? What happened to that kid's parents? When the kid, when the parents sent their kid off to boarding school and then never visited and just put their trust in the government, this, this treaty agreement that the U.S. government would educate their children is the way that history tells us. The kids go off to boarding school, somehow die. You know, and these schools, by the way, were well funded. Uh, you know, it's not like they went down there and died of malnutrition. Oh, but there were diseases in the good old days. Yeah, whatever. Were they abused to death? You know, what happened? And why didn't the elders, the ancestors, protect their children better than that. And get all mad at, you know, the school systems, and the government, but 
come on, you guys. Did you have any agency of your own? Were you really so primitive and helpless that you couldn't resist <laughs> the, uh, everything that went down? I don't know. I find myself rethinking Indian history as I get older and holding more accountability to so-called Native Americans. Wow, I'm really crappy. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. I am Michael Lyons. Thank you for listening. And I will see you again. Kigawaba Min. <laughs>